I had to realize that I can't take care of anybody if I'm not because taking I care of myself. But the people like a, that I thought would have supported me did not. Right? I was surprised on the people who did support me. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of The Beautiful Black Sheep. I am your host, Mika D. Davis. And we're going to go ahead and get started. But first, I wanted to talk about a couple of things because I know it's been a little over a week um, since I posted my very first episode. It's doing good. I'm super excited. <laughs> so I want to talk about when I'll be posting. So I've decided to post once a week until I get my schedule together and, you know, just get life back on track. So I'm going to be posting every Friday. Um, you guys can leave down in the comments if you prefer another day because maybe Friday is a busy day. But it's going to be every Friday for now. And um, once I get my schedule together, I'm going to try to post. I'm not going to try. I'm going to post um, twice a week. So it's probably going to be Monday or Tuesday and then Friday. So that's going to be the um, that's going to be the upload dates for now. Date for now, Friday. Um. So with that being said, I also want to say I am officially forty years old. My birthday was last week or the week before. Like I said, it's been almost two weeks since I've posted and I've had a birthday since then. So I am 40 years old and I want to shout out my amazing wife for giving me an amazing birthday. Um, usually we out of the country on my birthday, but we decided to stay home. I did not miss anything. We had an amazing time. I actually have my birthday video um, that I uploaded so you guys can check that out so you can see what all we did So shout out to my wife. Um, I also want to shout out to my cousin Tavia, she got me a birthday gift. Um, I got a lot of birthday gifts from my wife But my cousin she thought about me. She always supports me and I want to shout her out as well She purchased this um microphone kit because i told her about my new podcast that i was starting um actually i told her about that on her birthday which is like a week before mine so on my birthday she got me a microphone kit so i haven't plugged it up yet because i need to get a table to hook it on but once i get that i'm in the process I will be using this microphone. So, shout out to her. Love you, boo. I know you watching. <laughs> uh, so, what's next? Oh, of course I told you guys I will have something to drink um, when I'm talking to you guys. Because uh, it's a lot of talking and I need to drink. Girl, I just want to drink, probably. Anyways, I'm drinking the Double XL blackberry wine um it's almost gone <laughs> it's almost gone it's been chilling in the freezer but um it's really strong y'all this blackberry is really strong me personally i like it but if you don't really drink this is probably not the wine for you but if you like a buzz with your wine, but not getting, you know, drunk, this is a good one to check out. They have different uh, flavors, and I have a couple of more that I'm going to try. I haven't opened those yet, but this is the first one that I opened up and tried. Um, I like it. My wife likes it, too, but she's not really a drinker, so she don't really like how strong it is, but it does taste good. Um, so we're gonna pour us some wine and then we're gonna get in get into the second episode. 
All right, so. Hold on y'all, so before I get into <laughs> what I'm gonna talk about this episode, I need to, usually I have like a spray, it's just like, um, manifesting spray, um, blessing oil. It's like whatever term you use, that's what it is. So we're gonna spray this before we get started, and it smells amazing, y'all. So I do purchase this from a specific person. She uh, blesses it. She, you know, she do her thing, right? So we're gonna spray that because. You know, when you are doing things that um, a lot of people would like to do and, but just don't have the courage to do or whatever the excuse is, you know, a lot of people don't look at it, you know, and be happy for you. So we want to always cover um, our episodes. We want to cover this podcast because it's it's my baby and... um the beautiful black sheep i'm excited about it so i just want to cover it um have the universe cover it have any negativity um banish any negativity any you know evil eyes or you know we we're protected over here so basically is what i'm saying but anyways so let me get some of these Okay, so as you can tell by the title, the topic is boundaries. Boundaries, boundaries, however you want to say it. I'm sorry, y'all. I try not to wear glasses while I'm recording, but this short haircut is working it, and I'm trying to grow my hair out. So I need something <laughs> to balance this short hair is not low but it's not long either it's like you know that middle phase that ugly flat phase I, yeah I ain't feeling it so sorry if the glare is bothering y'all so cause I like to look into the camera look into you know those eyes and I like for people to look into my eyes but anyway nonetheless the subject is boundaries boundaries um, I jotted down a few notes because I can get into a story or a story time and I can be going on and on and on. So I kind of want to hit specific points and make sure I, um, give y'all exactly what I want to give you guys. So I jotted down a couple of, um, bullet points that I want to like dive into instead of just really rambling. So, first of all, let, let me say what boundaries mean to me. So, boundaries to me and what I've learned from boundaries and knowing that I had to set them. Um, boundaries was a life or death situation for me. Like, it, it got deep, right? Um, and when I say that, I have a story. I have a story behind boundaries and um i don't really talk about it but you know it's it's my life it happened and before before it happened i can honestly say i didn't have boundaries and this was honestly just two years ago so imagine you know not understanding or not really um having a grasp of, on what you need to set for yourself so you can get that respect, so you can have that respect for yourself, right? Um, I think you everybody needs to set certain boundaries when it comes to family, partners, children, strangers. Everyone needs to set boundaries. And I want to say... It became a life or death situation for me. 
I didn't know what boundaries was. I kind of was, um, let's just be honest about it, a people, ple a people pleaser. You know, when you are a people pleaser, you don't have boundaries. People can come in your space and cause chaos and leave feeling light. People can come in your space um, and dump on you. And when I say trauma dump on you, whatever they're going through, however hard life is for them, they can put it all on you, tell you everything about it, and, and they feel light and, and you feel heavy, right? I'm not saying you shouldn't be a listening ear for a friend that's going through hard times. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is you have to have boundaries for that person if that person is always going through something. That's the difference. You can be a listening ear and you can help because I am. I'm a helper. I'm a healer. I'm a listener. You know what I'm saying? I give myself. I do. I give myself. I used to give my energy. I used to get. I used to give it without boundaries, right? I still do, but now I am selective. I'm selective about who I give my energy to, who I give advice to, who I take serious and actually listen to. You know what I'm saying? Now I have boundaries. Um, before I get into the bullet points that I have, I want to. I want to tell you guys just, I'm not going to get into the whole story. If y'all want to know that story, I will put the link because I told the story on my YouTube. So I'll put that link down below so y'all can, you know, if you want to hear the full story about what happened, um, then I'll leave that link down below and you can check that out. But to make the long story short, I moved out of town. Excuse me, I moved out of town. It was going to be for, for a year, I, I believe, to make good money, quick money, extra money, right? Um, that was the plan. That's, that's what me and my wife and my daughter, that's what we all as a family decided for me to do, right? Um, because we had plans. We, were, we had plans. So, I did that. Um Everything's going well. Everything's going good. I absolutely love working out of town. I miss my family, but the money was top tier, right? So, I was good. Um, three months, I'm good. I'm still good. The, the end of that third month, I was there. Uh, it was a random day. Uh, I, I was out that day. <laughs> yeah, I was out that day. I'm rarely out, but I was out that day. Matter of fact, I think everybody was out that day because they was barbecuing or something downstairs. And we stayed in a hotel and then all the employees that came from out of town, it was like we were all in that hotel. One no other people outside of the workers that came from out of town was in the hotel. So it was like our home. So they were barbecuing downstairs. So I guess we all were off. I can't remember. But, um, I decided to straighten up. You know, we do have cleaning people, but of course, you know, you got to pre-clean before you have people to come in. So, I started straightening up and feeling good. I put on my workout clothes because I was going to go. Um, it was a lake behind the hotel. So, I was going to go out there and walk and, you know, just enjoy the day, just being off. So, walking around the room straightening up whatever um i got a phone call i had a package downstairs i knew what the package was this was my wife she sent me some shoes and she sent me some goodies and stuff like that so i was like i knew what it was so i wasn't in a rush to go down there and get it so um i started feeling lightheaded when i was in the mirror i started feeling lightheaded and the last time i felt lightheaded i was pregnant so when I felt lightheaded, I was like, well, that's the second time. But I was hurt. And I was like, oh, no. You know, that's impossible. So what's happening or whatever. So I decided to lay down for a second, relax, rest my mind or whatever. Maybe I'm doing too much. Or maybe I did too much working because I used to work. We worked every day, right? 
um because i was trying to get that overtime so maybe i'm doing too much maybe i need to relax today instead of trying to go outside and walk around and you know so um i lay down and i you know closed my eyes for a second but it like it was stars like a bunch of stars when i closed my eyes i can't explain it no other way it was a bunch of stars and the, and i'm gonna get to it y'all uh the reason why i'm telling y'all this story a bunch of stars so i was like okay just get up because the, the stars was freaking me out so i was like let me just walk downstairs get my package and see if i can walk this off shake it off or whatever so i walked downstairs went to the front desk got my package um you know people talking to me and stuff so it kind of took my mind off of it so i was like okay okay you know i'm still feeling that way but people are talking to me so it's kind of you know and uh I was like, okay, I'm still going through my package or whatever. I started talking to people and I'm still not feeling good. Still not feeling my best. Still not. So I was like, Ugh, let me just go back upstairs and lay down. Let's try to lay down and just relax my mind. Cause I'm kind of pan I'm in a panic now, but I'm still cool on the outside. Like people ain't gonna never see me panic. Um, <laughs> that's just how I'm built. So got back to my room put my package down lay down for a second my daughter called me and i don't know what she was talking about she probably was talking about her birthday because it was around that time i think so i was like boo let me call you back um let me lay down for a second i'm not feeling good so hung up with her i was laying down whatever um then my breathing my breathing start changing I couldn't catch a clear I don't I don't know how to explain it other than I couldn't catch a clear breath like my breath got shorter and shorter like I I'm still breathing but it's not clear for me it wasn't a clear pathway for me it it wasn't comfortable at all so I was like oh my gosh one thing I don't like is I don't like attention um <laughs> I don't like attention and I just didn't want to make a fuss. I don't like making a fuss about myself and I don't like attention. So the first thing I ran in my head was, oh my gosh, if I go down there and tell them to call the ambulance, it's people going to be crying around me. Like all my coworkers, we off, we all off. So I was like, okay, I just, I have to though. I have to go downstairs. And uh, I didn't call on the phone or nothing like that. I just went downstairs. And then... As I went downstairs, the manager, she worked that day at the front desk. And I told her, I was like, could you call the ambulance? Um, my breathing is getting shorter and shorter. I'm not sure what's going on. I was calm. Her face. I don't know what was on my face. <laughs> I, To me, I was calm inside. But maybe my face wasn't calm. Because it's something on my face she seen where she panicked. Or she just panicked, period. I wasn't sure. So she caught, it was, first of all, this was a small town. So once they get your sheriff department, everybody, everybody going to find out if the ambulance comes somewhere, right? Because the town was just that small. So um, the ambulance came. I was standing there. I started crying because I was nervous at this point because I can feel it. I can feel my uh, pathway get shorter, closing and closing and, cl you know. So I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? You know, I was frustrated because I wanted to know what was happening. So um, people started coming up to me, crying around me. My, um, the manager, hotel manager called my supervisor. He came out his room and everybody was just around me. What I didn't want to happen, happened. So the ambulance got there and they was they checked my blood pressure and he was like, I've never seen these numbers before. He was like, you have to go to the hospital right away. Like we have to take you to the hospital. And I was like, I don't want to go. <laughs> you know, I don't want to go. Stubborn as hell. But I called the 
ambulance so they can tell me what's wrong, but I didn't want them to send me to the hospital. But he was like, I've never seen these numbers before. Your your blood pressure is um, heart attack high. Like, you're having a heart attack or something's happening. These, these numbers are off the chart. I don't remember what they were, but he said hey, he had never seen them before. And he was like, um, if you're more comfortable with somebody taking you, then it's, you know, it's right around the corner and we don't have to take you if that's what you're worried about, you know, the charge or whatever. And I was like, I wasn't worried about the charge, but I was more comfortable in a car. And so my supervisor, he said he'll take me, excuse me, we got in his truck, his damn trucks, one star. So he had to grab one of the guys that was sitting in their car. I think he was sitting there drinking or smoking or something. And he said, you need to take us to the hospital right now, whatever. So I cannot remember his name, but shout out to him because he got me to the hospital. And we, ain't know nothing, we didn't know nothing about this small town. We knew it was a hospital around the corner, but where? We didn't know. So he was actually talking to a girl at the time on the phone that he was, you know, hooking up with or whatever. And she told us exactly where it was and they got me to the hospital. So shout out to them, <laughs> whoever they are, I can't remember. But I got to the hospital, I had to put a mask on, you know, COVID or whatever, they were still doing that. And uh, when I got on the, st the stretcher, the bed or whatever, when I got on the bed and they took my blood pressure again because Obviously, the ambulance came up there to make sure I was okay, make sure I got there. And he told them about my blood pressure, and they took it again. And they was like, yeah. And then, the um, this is when it got serious. The, what you call the, the head person of the hospital, she came. She was like, look, she was talking to me. I was chilling still. I was nervous. My pipe was you know it was getting shorter and shorter um but i other than that i was you know i was okay i thought i was just gonna get some blood pressure medicine and they give me something to get it get it to go down and then you know you know i'll be i can go to work <laughs> the next day or whatever that that was not it so um she said you are um you're dangerously, um, you're in danger of something. It was some medical term she was trying to tell me. And uh, I was like, okay, but I'll be okay. Okay. She was like, um, we do need to contact um, your, the person you want us to contact. We need to contact them immediately. And you finna be, you're going to be airlifted to a heart specialist doctor or a surgeon and i was like what early did something to go in a helicopter she was like yes yeah, like when i say we we gotta move fast and they was moving fast they was as she was talking to me they was getting me together wrapping me up or whatever to get me on that um the helicopter and i'm looking like it's not that serious you know, to me, how I felt, I was nervous. And, you know, I can feel my breathing is is different. But uh, to me, it wasn't that serious, right? Um, that's when you think you're invisible. That's that's what happens when you think you're invisible. Or you think nothing like that will happen to you. Lies. Lies. All lies, right? None of us is invi invisible. It can happen to you right so she was like i'm gonna call your wife because i told her who to call so i'm gonna call your wife and then um uh, god bless you or something like that she said to me like you know she didn't tell me i hope you don't die but she she made me feel like i'm praying for you type thing god bless you or she said something like that and so they gave me the instructions they told me we finna do this we finna do this and we're gonna get you here and so we was booking. I got in there. It was real small in there. Loud. They put earphones over me because it was, it was a lot going on. A hell of a lot. And my wife called me. 
while I was in the helicopter. And, you know, and to me, I was still okay because I was able to pick up my phone and talk to her. I was able to pick up my phone and talk to her. And so she was like, what's happening? What's going on? I was like, honey, I'm okay. And she said, the doctor told me what's happening to you. You're not okay. And I was looking like, I'm okay. Like, we was video chatting. And I look like, I was showing her like, I'm okay. She was like, no, you're in a helicopter. My wife, she went to nursing school. So she, know what, she knows when you early did, she know what that means, right? I didn't know. So, got to the hospital. They running down the hallway. Like, we booking. Like, some stuff off of um, Grey's Anatomy. We booking. <sighs> down the hallway to surgery. And after that, I don't remember none, of course. But, I think the doctor worked on me for, like, 12 to 18 hours straight. Or some, like, some wild number of hours trying to save my life because I was gone, right? Um, I was not supposed to survive. I was not supposed to survive. And I told that story and I hope it wasn't too long. It, it could have been longer, but I, t cause it's a whole nother, a whole nother two weeks after that of just, you know, so many issues, so many surgeries. I had so many surgeries, not just that one. That was that one big surgery to save my life. But after that, I had like 11 more surgeries uh, within a two week span. But I won't, again, I won't get into all of that because I did do a video on that and I'll leave that link. But I told y'all that story time to say, um, I had that aneurysm because it was an aneurysm. I had that aneurysm um, because I didn't have boundaries, and and I'm and I'm not bullshit. I had that aneurysm because I didn't have boundaries. I was running around trying to please everybody, and this is long before I met my wife. You know what I'm saying? The relationship before I met my wife, that's when I actually got uh, high blood pressure. But I never took it serious, even though I have no idea why I never took it serious because my mama have high blood pressure. But I never just took it serious because this is why. This is a stupid reason, but this is why. I didn't take it very serious because I never had high blood pressure. As big as I got, I have I my highest weight, I won't say, but I I got big during my pregnancy with my daughter. Right? I didn't have high blood pressure. Not at all. Years after having her, never had it. Ten years later, still didn't have high blood pressure, right? When I got in that one relationship, that one relationship where that person was toxic that person didn't know themselves that person didn't like themselves that you know what i'm saying and when you find and when you meet a light when you meet a light me and when a light and a darkness come together that that light that didn't know they were a light that didn't know that boundaries is going to be super important when you're in a relationship with this darkness it's going to be important it's vital to you saving you when when that light didn't, don't know that it causes high blood pressure it causes self-doubt it causes depression it causes sadness unhappiness you know what i'm saying <laughs> you second guessing yourself what are you blaming yourself you know what i'm saying but had I known about boundaries, had I known anything about boundaries and how to set them, I would have never got high blood pressure. And that's that's on my daughter. I got high blood pressure because of that relationship. 
after that relationship, went to the hospital because I kept having headaches. And they said, your blood pressure is super high. And that was when I was grieving that relationship because it was dead. It was done. It was over. But I was hurting from it because, you know, I worked so hard to make it work, right? And I'm not getting into the details about it because I've healed and it's over and done with. But that relationship is significant for me because that's when I got high blood pressure, right? And I would have never, I would have never had I, you know what I'm saying? You give, I gave everything. I gave everything I had and it was painful. It was painful to give everything I had because I think I gave what I didn't have. You know? Yeah. So, that whole story time was to say, um, not, not having boundaries in place with people, strangers, family, friends, it can lead to something detrimental to you. It causes stress. It causes high blood pressure. It causes, um, it causes burnouts. Like, you could be okay one day, and then, you know, you go through, you know, you, we go, everybody go through things, right? But you look around and be like, I don't want this no more. I don't want to do this no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, you burnt out. And that's because you didn't have boundaries in place. You let people pull from you pull from you and they didn't they didn't replace anything you let people pull on your energy and i'm talking to myself too if you letting people pull on your energy and and they not replacing it with anything you're gonna burn out it's gonna be a burnout and you're gonna have to deal with that burnout nobody else is that person that dead was able to pull from you to fulfill something in them is not going to be nowhere around. The ex is nowhere around for good reason, but the ex is nowhere around. You know what I'm saying? So you don't let you don't let people pull on you. Set boundaries. I'm not saying be mean to people. I'm not saying shut people out your life. I'm saying set boundaries. Boundaries. If you set boundaries, people respect you. They don't have a choice. Either you want to be in my life or you don't. If you, Either you want to deal with me or you don't. And me personally, I have, I don't have a problem with either one. Either you hear and you hear giving giving me something a give and take or you can go about your business right i have i haven't always been that way it had to take me almost dying for me to set boundaries with people i said i have boundaries with everybody everybody boundaries is different strangers my boundaries with strangers are different than my boundaries with my wife or my daughter or my mother or you know what I'm saying? They're different, but they're there. And everybody respect my boundaries. And if they don't, then we have to have a conversation. And then if you cross those boundaries after the conversation, then you gotta go, right? You gotta go. Um... <laughs> People will say you're cold or you're mean, you know, cold, mean, a bitch, whatever, whatever people may call you. I say you're smart. <laughs> I say you're taking care of yourself when you set boundaries. Because boundaries is self-care. You have to take care of you first. You can't give nothing to nobody 
until you take care of yourself. Period, point blank. I was taking care of everybody around me my whole life. Like, you know, I'm there. I'm there. Yes, yes, of course. You know, I'm a little tired, but that's okay. I'll figure it out. That's my favorite line. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. No. I can't do that. I have to get some rest. You know, those are those are my new lines now. I I'm sorry I can't. And sometimes just no, there's no explanation. It's just no. And they take it however they want to take it. It's okay if people are upset with you because you're taking care of yourself or you're putting yourself first. It's okay. It's it's okay if you're a villain and somebody's sorry. I promise you it's okay. You know who you are. You know what you've done. You know how you help people. You know the person you are. So it's okay if somebody paints you as a villain in their story. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's fine. <laughs> right? Because at the end of the day, this is your life. You have to live your life. Nobody's going to come over and pick you up when you have that mental breakdown. People can be there for you. Nobody can pick you up but you. Nobody is going to be able to pick you up but you. They can say all the kind words that they, you know, they can say they understand. They can say, I, I'm sorry it happened to you. They can say all these kind words, all these, you know, loving words. But at the end of the day, nobody can pick you up but you. So... With saying all that, in conclusion, my advice is to set boundaries with people. Um, the benefits of boundaries is having self-respect, having respect from others. Also, is a sh it's less stressful. Life is already stressful enough without people pulling on you, right? Um, what else? Your mental health, like, we're going to get into mental health, but I don't want this video to be too long. But your mental health will be more stable. Um, because, again, like, everybody goes through things. We go through stuff every day, all day. But it's all about how you transmute it, right? You going through something some today or you been going through something all week. If you sit down... And you transmute that energy. And when I say, I'm going to get into that. That might be not the next topic. So the week after that is probably something I'll be talking about. But I hope you guys enjoyed the second episode of The Beautiful Black Sheep. And make sure you guys tune in. Turn those post notifications on. And leave comments down below. And let's conversate in the um in the comments down below let's have this conversation about boundaries and i will see you guys on episode three next week later